when building AI applications, should you collect data from a limited environment or not? In this video, I will show you how to collect the right data to feed your go-to-market strategy. Hi there, I'm Colin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. In this one, I will answer to one of the most common questions I get asked by my clients, which is, you know, should we push, put, should we put or not some constraints on the type of data that we are going to collect? Should we narrow down, should we limit the scope of our data set? And here I will show you the, the, our, our answer, our methodology. If you're interested in these kind of problems, I will leave a link below with the early access free preview of our course on how to create great data sets. And there is some bonus by the end of this video, so stay until the end, okay? So there are two types of constraints whenever you are building a data set. One, are, one is technical constraints and then the other one is domain constraints, okay? So what do I mean by technical constraints? Let's put an example on a medical application where you are being doing a model to detect if a patient has a certain disease. Okay, so a technical constraint will be, for example, the type of device you use, or for example, the distance between the camera and the patient, okay, or the angle between the camera and the patient, or the kind of illumination or the room where you are collecting the data, or the orientation of the camera. All of these are technical constraints. You can decide whether or not you want to impose uh, or during the during the collection, okay, during the initial acquisition of your data set to train your AI models. Then we have domain constraints. For example, what is the population, the target population of potential patients that I will tackle, or what is the stage of the procedure? So I am planning to place this during triage, during screening. What is the right stage where I should I collect my data? Let me give you another example. In, in for example, uh, in retail, let's say you are building a model, a computer vision model to detect stuff or retail stores. You can have, for example, technical constraints, such as, for example, the type of devices that you use, the height of the camera, so the position of the camera, the angles, field, the field of view of the camera, how many cameras, Those, all of those are technical constraints, okay? And then you have domain constraints, such as what kind of stores are you covering? Are you going, for example, for fashion stores or are you going for hardware? So what kind of stores you cover? Okay, so you have, in all cases, you will have these two types of constraints and you can you should decide for each one of these constraints if you want to impose limits or not on the data that you will collect with our advice, with our methodology online. So let's say what will happen, what are the pros and cons of adding or removing a constraint. So let's say you want to add the constraint. What is the pro? The pro that your algorithm will be focused on what actually matters. So if you are putting a constraint on, on a certain variable, you know you won't have variability on that variable, so your algorithm can be more focus on discovering the patterns that are actually relevant for your decision task. What is the main disadvantage? That your algorithm will could be over specialized, so it won't react well to other environments, to other scenarios, okay? That's the main limitation of deciding to put a constraint. So let's say you go the other way, so you don't want to include a constraint. What is the main limitation? That basically your algorithm will need to deal, to learn how to deal with that variability. So if you don't put a constraint on uh, the device version on the type of smartphone you use to take the images, then your device, your, your machine learning model will be, should be able to you know, deal with all ranges of image quality, noise, field of view, etc. So you should spec, you, you will need more data to reach the same level of performance than with the constraint. You ask me how much data. Well, if you are interested on that, I have another video on how much data do you need to train your machine learning model. I believe uh, the link. Okay. So whenever you are facing this question of whether or not you should put a constraint, a limit, a boundary on your data, I will give you the four questions you need to ask ourselves to to answer to this. Okay. So the first one is: Are you imposing these constraints to validate fast and then expand? If that's the case, then yes, you should put, you should place the constraint. So you can quickly recognize if the model, if you can reach a good predictive performance on the task, if you can actually solve the problem, and then you can expand later on. So it's being a more, it's being more lean. So it's being more agile on the implementation of your model. If that's your vision, if that's sort of your culture, then yes, you should put those constraints and then start removing the, the constraints incrementally because you know this is not a one-shot thing, but an iterative thing that where you will start expanding uh, your model. So the second question you need to ask yourself is how easy will it be to replicate such constraints in production without affecting the experience? So will you be able to ask your end users 
to follow the same advice, to follow the same instructions, to put the same constraints in place without severely affecting the experience from those end users? If the answer is yes, if you can put these constraints easily in, in, the, in the final application, then there is nothing to think about. You should put those constraints. Why? Because again, you will be facilitating the job for your machine learning models without hurting the experience. But the answer is not. You should think twice whether or not these constraints are just creating additional friction for, your, for the adoption of your AI product, okay? And again, the same thing happens for, for quality. Like people always say, you know, um, gar uh, garbage in, garbage out, you should put good data quality on your model, otherwise it will just produce garbage. Well, yes, but if your model doesn't know how to deal with garbage data, then it will find troubles working with that data in production. So if you cannot guarantee that the data you will get in production has the same level of quality, then it's better to put some garbage in your training so your model knows how to handle that, okay? Now let's go for the third question, okay? Which is, do you expect the model to work in all scenarios or only on your limited subset, okay? If you expect to put some constraints on training and, you know, then somehow the model will magically figure out what's going on with the rest, then you, are you can be facing some problems, okay? So if you expect to your model to work in all those scenarios, be prepared to collect data in all those scenarios. Again, here we have some explicit constraints and some implicit ones. For example, maybe because of you are taking data from one, uh, from one hospital and that hospital has a certain type of population, which is the population from your country, then you are implicitly biasing your model or limiting your model to a certain type of skin color, to a certain type of demographics, to a certain type of patients, right? So think about all of these constraints when you are going to expand. If you plan to do like a massive expansion, a massive release for all kinds of populations from day one, you should be able to collect data from all those populations, okay? And the final question is, is your go-to-market strategy and your data collection aligned, okay? So are you basically prioritizing the type of data collection that follows your go-to-market strategy or should you reprioritize what data you need so you make sure you will be useful for your early stage adopters, okay? That's your, the main question you need to ask. So where are you releasing the product first? What type of markets, sub-segments, etc. so you can prioritize that data collection and then work together with product on the expansion, collecting more data as you increase as you move to different markets, okay? I told you there was a bonus here, okay, for those of you that say. So on the link below, you will have our tool with our guidelines for choosing of whether or not to put a constraint. And inside those guidelines, you will have a discount, a voucher for our great data set scores that we are about to release. Okay, so my general advice to just wrap up is put constraints on everything that you can control without affecting the overall experience, okay? or on the opportunity size, so as long as you are not limiting too much the expected uh, impact of your model, and on anything, on all things that are irrelevant for decision making. So everything that you can control without affecting the model impact, without affecting adoption, you should constrain. Everything else is excessive and you should remove it from the constraint. You should be, let your model learn all of those variables. So in the next video, I will also show you uh, how can workflow, some bottlenecks or other stages of, the, of your business can affect the potential impact of your AI model. So remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. See you soon. Bye-bye.